Hello guys, welcome to a new review from this China Germany. Today we have a look at the Elephone P7000, which probably is one of the most hyped 64-bit devices of this year. Um, initially it was scheduled to launch in March 2015 and that's been quite a while ago. It got delayed again and again and now finally Elephone started shipping the devices but still cannot meet the demand is way too slow producing the devices. Anyway we've got a review unit of the Elephone P7000 in color white here and well let's have a look at it and see how it is. So what you see in front of the camera is the packaging of the Elephone P7000 and indeed this one does look unusual for Elephone devices. Um, it has a tad of premium look and feel to it, um, very well designed, I really like it even though it's rather huge. So what you see here is of course the Elephone logo and a fingerprint of some guy which of course means that we have a fingerprint sensor going on here. One of the main features of the P7000. And below we have a little slogan, open the box to get surprised. Well, so let's do that, see if we have surprised. And yep, we definitely are. So you get quite a lot of stuff um, here, at least if you didn't order it for 159 bucks, um, if you paid the full price for it, you get all accessories with it. Um, so this is the back, the phone would be placed if you unbox the device for the first time. And below that you see a little compartment which contains the quick start guide, which is in English language. Um, the part in the center here contains the USB data transfer and charging cable as well as a power um, connector for the phone or a, a wall charger. Um, this one's charging with um, 1.5 amperes and well it comes with a localized plug so if you live in Germany you get a German plug. If you live in America you get a US plug so that's pretty neat. and. Over here we get a special tempered glass for the Elephone P7000 which actually is quite thick um, and very flexible. Um, it's real glass, um, very high quality, I like that. Elephone did a good job with that. And below there we have um, another pair of accessories. Um, one of them is a standard plastic screen protector in case you don't want to use tempered glass ones and we also have a flip case which works the same as with the M-Lace M52 Red Note it's actually the very same flip cover just with an Elephone logo here on the bottom. So that's for the packaging and all the accessories we got uh, with the phone. Um, well it looks quite nice it's quite a lot you get there so let's have a look at the device itself. So this is how the white Elephone P7000 looks like. It's completely in white front and rear and we have a golden metal frame on here, which at the first look um, looks stunning, very high quality. Um, the phone also feels like it's made from a very high quality, but as I said, only at the first look, unfortunately. Um, well, the reason for that is that the phone is made entirely from plastic, except the very thin metal frame that's almost thin as foil. Of course, I'm exaggerating a bit, but it's really not a a thick frame it doesn't give any stability to the phone because it's so thin and well we also have a, a, a screen made from glass so that's not plastic as well but the whole chassis the rear is made from plastic and this makes the phone very flexible and bendable even more so than most other phones I can show you that I really don't need to put much pressure on it to bend it and I have seen people who damaged their phones just by carrying it inside a tight pocket or um, some got some strange clouding effects on the screen some white um, dots those also come from the bending of the phone and that's really not good I mean you pay a uh, full price for this phone is 205 US dollars I mean that's not all that cheap for a Chinese phone um, you get phones with the same hardware, with the same specs for less these days and they aren't as bendable as this device is. So that's a real letdown. But it's not all. The overall build quality just isn't all that good. Um, 
Talking about the frame around the screen, this one is also made from plastic. As you can see, there are kind of gaps between the plastic frame and the screen. And well, that's just badly built as you can see, because here the gap isn't present. Here we get a gap again. And it's the same around the roll device. And well, that is a real issue because through those gaps in the dark, you see the backlight of the screen. And well, that looks just cheap. Um, it's not really annoying, but well, if it looks cheap, it doesn't leave a good impression, right? Um, another thing I noticed is that those gaps eat up my hair in the face. So it kind of hurts when doing phone calls and stuff. Um, really not all that nice. I've heard some iPhone users had this problem as well in the past. Um, yeah, well, don't really like that. Um, another thing which I dislike a little is the home button. Let me show you that. Um, this one is back illuminated and also acts as a status LED and it can light up in multiple colors. You can set the colors and everything. All that is pretty nice, but the LED is way too dark. Let me show you that. You almost can't see the light. Now it's on. Now it's off. You almost can't see a difference and that's because light is shining on it. As soon as some light or sunlight is shining on this button, you almost can't see that. So it sucks as a status LED. Also, there's lots of light bleeding when you look at it in the dark. Um, not that nice. And I also miss icons or some LEDs which indicate where the menu and back buttons on this phone are placed. You simply can't see them, can't find them all the time, especially in the darkness. Um, it would have been better if they placed some icon or LED on there to show you where those touch areas are. Um, well, it's uh, it's been left outside for design reasons, but again, I don't like that all that much. Um, so what's left to say, well, um, thickness of the device might be an issue for some as well, but I can certainly live with that first because of the large battery inside of there. And second, because I think thick fablets feel a lot better inside the hand than such very thin devices. This one has 10.5 millimeters of thickness. That's quite a lot. Um, but as I said, I like it, but some might not like it. So, well, probably a thing of taste again. So next we're talking about the screen and well, at the first look, the screen looks pretty good. It's a 1080p 5.5 inch panel, which means we have a very good pixel density on here, which you can immediately see through the camera. Pixels are pretty much non-visible and also viewing angles of the screen are very good. Colors are as well, but there are a few flaws that Elephone need to fix, um, mostly software related. Um, oops, I forgot to turn it to silent mode. Let me do that, okay. Um, so first of all, the screen has a reddish tint and it's an extreme reddish tint. I mean, you really notice that right when you turn it on for the very first time and look at a white area, it's really a reddish white. Now, um, usually you are able to use MediaTek Mirror Vision to um, get rid of this red tint, but here that's unfortunately not possible because um, they forgot or couldn't implement it with Android 5.0 or Lollipop, so that needs to be fixed with some future updates. There are some Lollipop phones which support MediaTek Mirror Vision, so it's definitely possible they just need some more time for that. Um, the next issue is, which is far more significant, um, the screen brightness. Um, for some reason they dimmed the maximum screen brightness down, to, so you can actually only use about 40% of the maximum screen brightness uh, with this phone. And they did that uh, for the purpose to prevent the device from overheating since the ROM isn't well optimized right now. And um, which means that the phone probably would overheat on a hot summer day when the brightness is at 100%. Um, but well, this comes, this creates a huge issue because being outside, it gets extremely hard to see anything on the screen. And it gets even worse if the sun is shining on it, because then you see simply nothing. So this phone is pretty much unusable outside right now, because the screen is um, not bright enough. You can easily see that 
Um, I, have, I have full brightness here now and well it's very dark um, but well this really is just a software issue not a hardware issue because um, there is a custom ROM Lenovo Vibe UI out there which unlocks the full screen brightness and it's definitely a lot brighter than so you just need to wait for the next over the air update and Elephone will fix that. That's even been promised already and the update is scheduled to arrive this week. Um, what's left to say? Well, the touch screen works very nice. Um, you see pretty much no input lag. I really like that. And um, you also don't need to put on much pressure. It's very precise. All the good stuff there. It's also pretty smooth on the finger, not breaking the finger. It could be a little smoother, um, but I'm still fine with it. So next we're talking about specs here and Elephone delivers, um, well, the standard for the current mid-range market um, for China phones. Well, that's the MT6752 Octa-Core 64-bit SoC clocked at 1.7 GHz, 3 GB of RAM and 16 GB of internal unified memory. Um, unfortunately, the software isn't quite optimized, so you can't use um, the all the performance this phone put potentially could have, um, but um, well, the overall hardware performance is pretty good. Um, you notice the bad software a little with um, some benchmark results, as you can see here. And well, some apps are lagging a bit more than with other MT752 phones, but all in all, we have very potent processor in there. And once Elephone fixed that custom, uh, that, that stock ROM, um, I think the performance will be on par with all the other MT6752 flagships. Now, what I like extremely much with the Elephone P7000 is its fingerprint scanner. This one really is the best fingerprint scanner I've ever seen on a Chinese device. Let me just show you that. Um, it's a Touch ID fingerprint sensor or Press Touch ID, how, how they call that. Um, you simply lay your finger on it and the phone gets unlocked, so you don't need to swipe around anymore. And another great thing is that it doesn't matter in which angle you scan your finger. If you register your fingerprint um, that way, you still can unlock it that way or that way, no issues. Um, so let me turn it on, press my finger on it, and there we go, unlocked. Let's repeat that, turn it on, finger on it, unlocked. Off, on, finger on it, unlocked off on finger on it and we are again unlocked so that's working perfectly fine and um, well i love that fingerprint sensor i really do um but there are more downsides unfortunately um to mention first of all the hardware gets kind of hot because of all the plastic on here and um, the cooling really isn't that good usually you have a metal chassis in there which gets some heat out and transports it to the metal frame well here the only metal part um, on the PCB is the um, touch, the fingerprint sensor, uh, which got a metal frame. And well, this frame transfers the immense heat that's being generated inside of there out to that single point, which means it can get uncomfortable while playing games around that area. Um, well, that could definitely be done better. The phone doesn't overheat, but you really notice the heat that's being generated there and another thing I have to complain about is that the compass application isn't or, or the compass sensor isn't working. Um, we've got a magnetic field sensor inside of there so basically the hardware is there but as you can see it isn't working at all. So if you need a compass inside your phone you really need to stay away from this one since it doesn't work and well unfortunately that's very often the case with Chinese phones and I really dislike that. Um, well I hope that will change some times in the future. So next we're talking software as I said already we are running Android 5.0 Lollipop here and well the condition of this ROM is kind of beta right now so it's not a stable ROM. As I said MediaTek Mirror Vision is missing and the performance just isn't good. Um, sometimes we have lags going on right now it's running smooth but that's not always the case. Um, here you can see it again the UI is lagging. 
now it's running smooth again. So that's what happens here very frequently in all apps through the role user interface, also in games. That needs to be fixed. Um, it's not getting unusable, but um, it just isn't much fun if you see your phone lagging all the time. Um, well, there also are some freezes and crashes which I don't really like. Sometimes it's apps crashing, sometimes the whole OS is crashing and it can go as far that you really need to remove the battery from the phone to reboot it. It happens very seldom, that needs to be said, but it does happen, so stability still needs to improve. And well, there also are the usual compatibility issues with applications like PayPal and some benchmarks, um, which don't run on a Lollipop right now with MediaTek SOCs. Um, but well, that's the same with any Lollipop phone right now, so that's nothing new for you and I don't need to get into much details here. Next is audio. Um, well, I have to complain a little again. Um, first of all, the audio quality of the internal speaker isn't good at all. It sounds kind of muffled. Um, it just isn't of much fun listening to music with that speaker. Um, hard to explain how it sounds. You probably need to hear it for yourself. However, um, I really dislike that Illiphone again um, somehow wants to make people believe that a stereo speaker is inside of there, yet it's only a mono speaker here and under this hole is nothing. Um, I don't know why they keep doing that. I really dislike companies trying to fool customers into believing the, uh, their devices have stereo speakers while well, that isn't the case. Of course, um, they say, no, we aren't doing that to fool customers. That's just for design reasons. But that's so much bullshit in my opinion because um, you can do the design in a very different way. Either do the speaker, speaker grill through the wall area here or in some other way. So you get a symmetric, very nice design. You don't need to put two of these openings on there um, so that it looks like it has stereo speakers. It's really a pity. I don't know why Chinese keep doing that. I already complained about that with the Kingzone set one. Um, the headphone check luckily sounds very good. Um, we have a little background noise going on there, but it's very silent. You only hear that if nothing else is being played right now, and even then it's very subtle. So nothing to complain about, but the overall audio quality is very good. Very balanced, powerful output, just how I like it. Very loud. Um, well, just makes fun listening to music using good headphones with this device. Um, no way around that. Um, and what's for phone calls? Well. Phone calls sound average. Um, it's it's not bad, but um, not overly clear. Um, but you still can understand each other very well. So again, nothing to complain about here. Um, so next is reception quality, another important part about any phone. And surprisingly, after all the disappointments of the Elephone P7000, um, it does perform very well on there. Both um, mobile networks and Wi-Fi reception quality are on a very high level, above average, definitely above average. I've never had a single issue there. Um, I can receive lots of Wi-Fi networks here. Also, LTE networks are no problem, even with the band 20 here in Germany, which is often used by providers outside of the big cities. No issues. And well, Bluetooth is working fine as well. The only thing which I dislike is the GPS and it's not that the antenna would be bad. Let me just show you two tests. One has been done outside, that's this one, with an accuracy of 2 meters and it fixed for 12 satellites and well, the reception quality or the um, signal strength of single satellites is pretty good. Um, also inside the house you still can do a fix with 5 meters of accuracy and a fix for 5 satellites. Probably more is possible if you wait for a longer time. This has been done um, for like 40 seconds or so. Um, uh, anyway, if you do navigation with this phone, you will quickly notice um, uh, that it's somehow inaccurate. Um, the arrow somehow isn't on the street you are in reality and that really becomes an issue especially together with the compass, which is giving strange data to the navigation app and it's constantly turning around. Um, Elephone need to do something about that, no way around it. Um, so GPS basically is working fine, but still the software has some bug which prevents it from working properly. So 
The next topic is camera. Um, that's another very interesting part about the Elephone P7000 simply because there is a 13 megapixel rear camera which is based on a Sony IMX 214 sensor. And well, we all know that the IMX 214 is a very good sensor used in lots of flagships, including the OnePlus One, the Oppo Find 7 and many more devices. Now the front camera also is pretty good at 8 megapixels. It's an omnivision sensor with a wide angle lens. So how is the quality? Well, for the rear camera, I have to say that the picture quality is far away from anything I would complain about. The phone really does good pictures, great colors, great um, depth of field and everything. But um, basically the Sony AMX214 would be capable of doing better. So there is some lack of optimization going on there. We don't have a perfect color reproduction due to a reddish tint that can be removed, no problem. And the depth of field could be increased even further and also the focus perform performance and low light performance just by doing some software optimization. So I hope Elephone will do that with the next updates. Um, what I dislike about the rear camera is that the lens is crappy. Um, you really get a, uh, yeah, a blurred area on the left side of pictures and that's not just with my phone. Everyone complains about that. So that's the case with every device um, the lenses really aren't made from a good quality so you need to live with that it's not much annoying um, it depends on where the focus point is and so on um, just with some pictures the blurred area is really large and you really notice it there um, uh, as i said also the low light performance could be improved a little um, the camera has a hard time focusing in low light also creates a little too much noise or, or blurred images and also the LED flash could be a little bit brighter. It's not, not too dark, and, but also not really as high as it should be to create perfect images of larger rooms. Um, and another thing I noticed is that on video recordings you get interferences from the mobile network on the microphone of the device, um, which actually isn't just the case with video recordings, but with all types of audio recordings. The reason is they forgot to place an RF shielding around the microphone, which sits right below the GSM antenna. Well done, Elephone. Um, well, you probably can fix that with some um, aluminum foil. Um, I need to find a way to fix that that way. And let me just try that. I will probably do a video on that if I succeed. Um, anyway, what's about the front camera? Well, this one looks pretty good on daylight. Um, unfortunately, when it comes to low light selfies, that's pretty much impossible with the Elephone P7000. It creates so much noise, you barely can see anything anymore. Um, it's really not much fun doing selfies at night with this device. So one topic left to talk about, and that's battery. And well, I have kind of mixed feelings on that. First of all, we have a 3450 milliamps battery inside of there. Well, that's at least what Elephone claims, but, but well, I verify that and I can indeed confirm that the capacity is somewhere around 3000 to 3300 milliamps. So they didn't lie here. The battery really is pretty large. Yes, the battery life still isn't perfect as you can see here. I let the Geekbench 3 battery test run on there and it only got around 6 hours. Now if you remember back to some other um, devices with pretty similar specs, um, you will remember that there have been devices that reached about 8 hours of screen on time. So basically um, much more should have been possible there. Um, I would be satisfied if we would reach 9 hours of screen on time there. Um, anyway, that's again due to the software. It just isn't optimized right now. It's buggy. It needs too much energy. That's the reason the battery life isn't as good. And well, let's face it, you get over the day easily with, with one charge. Um, but well, it could be better, as I said, but I'm sure that will improve with future software updates. Um, another downside that I noticed is the charging time of the battery. It takes around four to five hours to fully charge the phone, which definitely is too much if you're used to fast charging. And there also is some bug with the battery calibration, um, which causes the phone to suddenly shut down from 22 to around 15%. 
of charge so it's really strange if you look at your phone it shows 22 percent suddenly it shuts off you put it on the charger and it shows zero percent so they really need to fix that um well that's about the review for now um we covered all topics so what's left to say for the elephone p7000 well my final verdict about it is um that it could be a good phone um it has quite some bugs but most of them are software related so if elephone really managed to fix all bugs that are software related we only have two main bugs left and well that's um the weak structure of the phone that you can bend it easily and also the interferences you get from the antenna on your microphone but well if you are into screwing around with your hardware you can probably fix that by yourself Anyway, for a device that has been under development for so many months, um, you really could expect Elephone to deliver, to deliver a flawless device. And while the problem Elephone has is that they release uh, like one new phone every two weeks or so, that's way too much. No company can handle that and you really notice that because the quality gets worse and worse and worse. The problems get more and more and more. The Elephone P7000 really is the perfect example for how you can screw up a basically great device just by doing too many things at once. So Elephone should really rethink their business strategy, um, create less devices but create good devices instead. Um, but well, regarding the Elephone P7000, um, what should you do now? Um, if you pre-ordered and you got it for 159 bucks, make sure to keep it and don't cancel your order. Um, if you put, if you if, if you paid the full 205 bucks for it, I would cancel if I were you because it's simply not worth so much money. At least at this time, better cancel and wait. Um, how updates work out, which bugs get fixed. Um, the same applies to those of you who didn't do anything yet, who didn't pre-order, who just are waiting for reviews. Also, stay tuned and follow how the software updates go. I will keep you guys posted on that. Um, and well, maybe one day the phone will be almost bug-free, then we have just a few hardware flaws left. And well, then it probably might be something you wanna purchase. So. As I said, basically it could be a great phone. I mean, we have a great reception quality with a very, very good camera, good screen, um, amazing fingerprint scanner and huge battery. So it's all there. Um, it just needs to be improved. Um, so well, that's for my review now. Um, I hope you liked it and it was helpful for you. If it was, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel if there are any questions left make sure to drop them below the video in the comment section and well if you like what we are doing at guest china germany in general make sure to follow us on facebook google plus and twitter you will now receive a performance demo of the device and i say bye bye over and out
yourself. It's extremely dangerous. 